Welcome to Music Matters Podcast with Daryl Craig Harris, talking about all things music with celebrities, artists, music business insiders, and more. Welcome to Music Matters, a podcast series about all things music. Today we have our special guest, bassist Josh Paul. Josh has been in a number of well-known bands, including Suicidal Tendencies, Infectious Grooves, and his recent band that he's been with since the very beginning is Daughtry. He's recorded five albums. They've had a number of hit singles, and it's just an awesome group. How you doing, Josh? I'm doing great. How you doing? Good, good. So you're down in Nashville, right? Yeah, just outside of Nashville. Um, uh, Mount Juliet, it's actually called. It's a city by the lakes, and we're enjoying it. Yeah, that's such a beautiful part of the world. We 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 were just talking about uh, bassist Billy Sheehan lives down there. There's actually a whole bunch of rock people that live in Nashville these days. Yeah, I've uh, I've come across a few of them. Billy, for sure, uh, great guy. Obviously, awesome bass player. Yeah, so there, there are a lot of people that actually live here. Yeah, it's funny. And even Vegas, too. There's there's people that live in Vegas that you would never associate with Vegas, rock people and all sorts of, I guess it's like, you know, just quality of life, right? Because you have your family down there. And I am here with my three boys and my wife. And uh, the boys are in, in school. So it's so much, it's a lot more mellow, I yeah. guess is a good way to put it than uh, LA where I'm from. I'm from Venice. Ah, so so yeah, we're Venice out is... here. Oh yeah, by the beach. I do miss the beach. We yeah. all miss the beach, but <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. We actually have we some. We do love some, it out here. We have some mutual friends that we were talking about. Um, the Wackerman gang, which is that's a whole talented family out in the. I guess they're more like Seal Beach down that way, where they're kind of based. But yeah. Oh God, Brooks and John and all of them. They're great people. I've known Brooks since I was a little kid, and we used yeah. to rehearse over at at the parents house and everything so it was, yeah that's a great it's really cool brooks is a monster yeah yeah it's actually amazing they, they sort of all are it's it's uh, they did they did something right with those with those guys <laughs> for sure um tell uh, me about tell seriously me. it's gen- genius level <laughs> exactly yeah hey so tell me um about your beginnings yeah. i know you kind of started on drums how old were you when you first started playing drums i think i was probably when I first sat down to start beating on the drums a little bit, uh, I was probably five years old. Wow. Uh, I was playing with my grandfather in a Dixieland band. He played every instrument and my parents are musicians. So music was always around us. Um, awesome. One thing that my grandfather said was, you know, you can play any of these instruments as long as you treat them with respect and I'm not going to tell you to turn down. So I jumped on the drums and did some gigs with him and uh, eventually uh, moved over to base probably when I was about 11 hmm. and uh, we moved into an apartment and you know neighbors don't really like kids banging on the drums <laughs> yeah that's that's true yeah well your parents your parents and your grandfather were awesome to allow you to start on drums first <laughs> oh yeah I mean I, I use that same sort of um, thought process and in, in ways to re- raise my kids as well awesome that's great would you um Actually, well, the one of the fun stories with you is tell me about the Don Henley connection. Ah, yeah, I, I was actually the kid, the little drummer boy in the Boys of Summer video by Don Henley. Awesome. And uh, I was seven years old and I went in and I guess my mom probably heard about him in audition, a cattle call or something like mm. that. And uh, I went in and I saw a bunch of other kids with their drumsticks. I didn't really know what was going on. So I yeah. went in. Yeah, you're, you're just having fun. <laughs> I was just going in having fun, exactly. So I, <laughs> I went in and I got it right there on the spot. Awesome. So yeah, it was uh, such a cool experience. Um, number one, it's Don Henley. Yeah, right. He's a legend. And he was always very kind to our family. And uh, awesome. to be a part of, um, I would say, music history, just from that video alone is yeah. a very cool thing for me. And my and I, kids watch it still and, and you know, it's like, oh my God, that's you, dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and actually, I mean, it's funny because like that, I mean, actually we were talking about Peter Palladino, um, who is, I guess he played the, the bass on that record, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. his I, fretless work is just insane. Yeah, that was actually the first time I really noticed i mean i was still young i guess when i was coming maybe coming out of high school when that record came out and uh i was kind of like a young budding bass player and i that was the first time i really noticed fretless bass 
and I was like, wow, like Sunset Grill. <laughs> yeah, oh, well, he, you know, he makes it sing. He just, the melodies yeah. and his um, intonation and everything is just, it's, it's, it's a hook in itself. Yeah. All of those lines. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's a challenging, uh, awesome sound, but like you said, like intonation, all that stuff, it's its a, a challenging bass to play. It's so musical, <laughs> yeah. you know. Uh, obviously, Jocko, yeah. too, is a legend for that. Oh, yeah. You can't touch him. So when you um, started playing bass, so your grandfather um, also played bass. You said he played many instruments. Was, did he give you your first bass, or how did that happen? Yeah, he had a... I, it was, I'm trying to remember what it was. I think it was a, a Gibson ripper maybe oh fun but but he had flat wounds on there and and the action was probably you know an inch off the strings were an inch off the fretboard (laughs) so he let me bang around on it and uh learn some notes and then my mom bought me a hyundai bass which i had no clue that hyundai made bases yeah right so we didn't (laughs) we didn't have a (laughs) We didn't have a lot of money, so she got yeah. it for very cheap, and I'm very grateful for it because I beat that thing up. Yeah, but you know <laughs> so what? When I you're when that... you're a kid and you get your first bass, it doesn't matter what it is, right? It's just no, a, it doesn't matter. Exciting. I didn't, <laughs> yeah, I didn't know the difference. I just knew it was a bass, and I could plug it in. Yeah. Even funnier was that um, I didn't have an amp, so I would. Um, I, I guess, I guess that's how I kind of got my. Um, heavier handed touch when I play uh, but you know trying to trying to hear yourself alone yeah it just makes but, some sound um, yeah yeah it makes some sound but I plugged into this karaoke machine that my sister got to sing because she's a singer oh, cool. and you know we would jam together and I would played all these tapes but that was my amp for a while yeah so did you um when you first started playing was that your main thing like listening to other people's records and playing and who, who were some of your influences oh well my grandfather, for one, uh, Jocko, um, yeah. Flea, Bootsy, uh, Pino. Yeah, um, all the guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, everybody. I mean, I, I I learned about James Jamerson later. I obviously knew about all of the soul music stuff because really as a kid, I, I just loved it. I was drawn to that. And I think it had to do with the bass and the drums. Hmm. Um, but... Um, uh, I, my mom got me some bass videos. Oh, okay, um, cool. I did homes. I did home studies for a while as a kid, and really, if I didn't have uh, music and and playing the bass, I probably would have got in so much trouble because there's you know I had so much time on my hands. Yeah. So yeah. she 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 got me um, a couple bass videos. I got a Flea video. I got a Jocko video. I got a Stu Ham video. Awesome um let's see what else billy sheehan yeah yeah i used that one and i just wore them out um you know that was the great thing about when those came out because like when i you know i started sort of getting into guitar bass playing in the 70s 80s i guess before youtube before a lot of that stuff became really available and now like kids have so much access to world-class players online and and for free and right. it's just there, you know, everybody's yeah. out there just playing away. You know, my cousin, my older cousin was a bass player too, or is a bass player. And he played in, um, he had a really pretty popular cover band in LA in the 80s. What was the name so, of that? So uh, Liquid Blue. It okay, was in, cool. I think they did the Red Onions all over the place. Which used to be like those. the big thing, yeah, Orange County. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, so, um, but he, I was always... I looked up to him as a bass player as well. And he actually let me borrow his 78 music man when I was a teenager. So I used that for a while. Yeah. And I was able to take a few lessons from uh, Lewis Johnson and, you know, him with the music man. And I brought that in. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Slap uh, bass. Oh, that's how, that's where I learned how to slap. I mean, that's a great place to learn because he was, he was a master. Absolutely. He was, he's just awesome still i mean i listen back to all that stuff and the power that he puts into that yeah. just so solid yeah and that, that was like that that also that sort of like that really the flea connection too right because Flea had that same music man yeah. yeah and uh the thing that i always loved about flea was his he sort of infused punk rock with the funk thing right. in his in his aggressive sort of nature 
um, not necessarily his his personality, but in his playing. You know what I mean? He's pretty. Yeah. He plays pretty aggressive, and uh, I thought that the punk rock vibe was. I can hear that in his playing always. Yeah, and he has. I mean, the thing about Flea um, is he has a lot of joy. He's playing with a smile on. You can tell he's just enjoying. The yeah, crap. yeah. He's enjoying the crap out of what he's doing, and it's just really you feel that in the music, and you also see when you see him playing. It's exciting to watch yeah. that. Oh yeah, he's got so much energy, and and the vibes that he put out that he puts out are just it's creativity. I love so, it. Yeah. So you were um, when you first started really like playing, and you I know you were hanging out with the guys from Fishbone was was one of the influences for you as a young guy. Um, yeah. When did you really start, like start? things happening for you bass playing wise in LA and that that kind of getting into the scene so uh, I started a band or I had a bunch of bands but I started like a funk band and we would play at the Malibu Inn and a few other little places and then Brooks had his band and we ended up just we would do the same shows right you know, all around LA and stuff like that and, and how, how, old are you? Was, how old are you in that in that time period probably 15 yeah, so that's like that. You're like yeah. in like in heaven, right? Doing these gigs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fifteen to seventeen, maybe fifteen awesome. for a couple of years. We did it, and then uh, Fishbone was always headlining, or Weapon of Choice, or one of those. Mm -hmm. So it was like you know those guys. I was like uh, Angelo, as a front person, yeah. was just insane. And I, we'd go to the shows at the House of Blues and Malibu and stuff, and I would just be in awe always. Yeah. And, and great, Norwood, great players, yeah. Oh yeah, Fish and Norwood. It's just, it was heaven to me. Yeah. And um, so Brooks and I knew each other from our bands and and growing up around the scene. And then uh, he was playing with Infectious Grooves, mm -hmm. and uh, he got a hold of me and let me know that Suicidal was looking for a bass player and asked awesome. if I wanted to audition. Yeah. And I was seventeen, I believe. Wow. Something and that's, like I mean, that. like the suicidal tendency stuff that for people that don't know them, I mean, first of all, they've been around for a long time and, and like, that's not easy stuff to play. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, when I first got the call, I was like, Oh my God, are you serious? Because I loved infectious and I loved yeah. suicidal and, and growing up in Venice, you know, that's, that's the dream gig. Yeah. That's, that's the, the Southern California you know, like band as like, the bass player yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. So luckily I knew a bunch of the songs because I was a fan. Right. So um, went in and I auditioned and I was nervous as hell, uh, but I ended up getting it. Uh, Brooks and I lock in pretty well from, yeah. from the onset. Always. Yeah. And he's, I mean, he's a, um, a world, obviously world-class drummer, amazing player. And Robert Trejillo actually yeah. had been there before you, right? Yeah. Um, Robert had um, moved on to play with Ozzy. Yeah. So um, they were wanting to do Suicidal again, the band was, and uh, needed someone. So I, I replaced him and filled his shoes. And I was always a fan of Robert as well. Yeah. You know, and a great, like, great, great, stuff, great player, great guy. Oh, he's, he's a fantastic guy. He's, he's the guy that will remember your name. Yeah. No matter if you've met once or 10 times, 10 years ago, he's just, you know, he's a very caring, yeah. talented guy. He's awesome. I love been the, the same uh, person. Been the same person. As I love in, the, in that in that documentary, the metallic. You've, I'm sure you've seen the Metallica documentary yeah. when they're hiring them and they're sitting around the table yeah. and they go, "Yeah, okay, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna give you a million dollars as an advance." And I was just like, because I mean, he was doing well. Obviously, Ozzy was a good gig, yeah. but but I'm like, it wasn't it wasn't that. And like that, I yeah. just thought that that was it was so cool that somebody who's nice, who can obviously play gets an opportunity like that like we all sort of that's sort of the dream for i guess all of us when we're kids or we're starting out right yeah yeah very deserving and very talented and and just uh he's just awesome yeah uh, yeah it's good it's nice to see the good guys win <laughs> oh yes isn't it <laughs> because it doesn't unfortunately in life it doesn't always happen that way so when that happens it's like yeah. yes you know i think eventually it probably does for 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 the good guys but yeah i yeah. like to see the good guys win yeah so how much your your suicidal thing like were those guys at that point were they touring were they recording what was what was the situation so they wanted to do some new songs and then uh, work on a new record and 
they also wanted to book a tour. They were just coming back. So I think Mike was focusing on infectious and then, yeah. um, Mike's that, actually, Mike, it's Mike Muir, right? Muir, Wait, Mike Muir. Yeah. The yeah. singer. Yeah. Um, and I believe my first gig was their first show because they were banned in Los Angeles. Oh. So their, their first show <laughs> that, that they were allowed to play again. Wow. And it was the energy in that room. I had never seen anything like it. Yeah. That must've been the honestly. same. Honestly. And I think, you know, I was crapping my pants. Wow. Yeah. Just <laughs> it's so impressed with just the vibe. Of yeah. Everything. There's like so much, like you're excited. You're like nervous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it went well. And uh, we started recording some songs and, I did some old songs and I also, we wrote some new songs and um, from then it was a great time that yeah. whole time in Suicide and Infectious. I mean, I, I learned so much. Yeah, Infectious uh, was sort of really, like the, the, the funk side of, of suicidal, I guess. How would you explain that? Uh, definitely the funk side. What, by the time I was in the band or at the time I was in the band, um, it was basically both. Oh, okay. It was it was a hybrid, so yeah. the music was kind of like Infectious Grooves, but with punk rock. And Dean from Infectious Grooves started playing with Suicidal. Oh, okay, cool. So um, it was a bit of a hybrid, but it worked out. Um, we did the album Freedom and wanted to go back to some straight punk rock stuff with yeah. you know some funk vibes in there as well. But I loved. I love all the fast stuff. Yeah, and it's, I tell you what, like, the I was checking out Suicidal again, like, last night, because I actually, even when I was growing up in L.A., like, they were still, they were already big then. I mean, they've been a big yeah. band for a long time. And, like, yeah. that, that yeah, like, sort of, like, I guess, like, you know, the edgy funk thing that they do is so, like, it's so cool. It's really interesting. It is. And 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 uh, props to, to Mike and everybody that's been in the band, you know, in the past and, and in the band now. Um, yeah. He has a, a knack for for putting together some great musicians. Yeah, and that's and that's actually, that's something you see in a lot of bands that have lasted a long time, like that making the right personnel changes. I'm sure you guys have dealt with that in Daughtry. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. you know, just being, because that one person, the chemistry is so important in a band situation, right? Oh, 100%. You know, you got to live with these people if you're touring and yeah. you got to kind of, kind of like somewhat the same things. Yeah, and, and it's not just about um, the playing, it's also about it's, them as a person. Right. Um, and then obviously very important is the chemistry um, performance wise, sure. uh, not only in, in creative wise as well. Yeah. Yeah. The energy on stage and that whole thing. Yeah. Um, yep. Tell us about the, the Daughtry. How, how did the, with, with Chris, like, how did that come about? Obviously he had done, he had done Idol, right? Uh, yeah. So in between the time from Suicidal Infectious to Daughtry, um, I'd still been touring with different bands and artists like Everlast and Kelly Osborne and the Veronicas right. and just doing a bunch of stuff and uh, sort of working on my craft, you know, writing and yeah, still you're, you're still how old you, at that point, you're still in your like, I guess probably at that point, your early 20s, right? Early 20s. Yeah. yeah. So um, still touring. And then I got a call uh, from my buddy, Barry Squire. And yeah, I know Barry. Was, Yep. Yeah, he was putting together or helping put together Chris's band with Stevie Salas. Mm -hmm. So Stevie knew me from Suicidal and Infectious. Awesome. So I got in there and I, I auditioned and I got it right there. You know, the vibe was all good. Um, Chris was laid back, dude. Awesome singer. Yeah. So it worked out. It went very quickly, like from that very first audition to actually doing stuff. I think we had a photo shoot like three days later or something. Wow. For yeah. the record. So he was, he was finishing up his record, the first record and finishing up the TV show. Yeah. So then from right after that, it just went. <laughs> so you're thinking fast. at that point, you're like, um, I, yeah. So Barry actually good to back up a little Barry, Barry Squire is actually a guy that in LA that's really well known for helping putting, putting bands together, not really a contractor, but like a guy that just knows a lot of folks and people are in touch with him. And those guys, as a young player, those guys are gold for you. Right, just helping you oh. kind of connect with gigs. Oh, yeah, hundred percent. Barry's such a cool dude. We've been great friends since I was eighteen years old. He has um, awesome. called me for a lot of gigs and uh, gotten me a lot of gigs. So I love, I love Barry. Can't thank him enough. 
Yeah, he he has a Facebook page, and people people tend tend to players tend to watch that page because he yeah <laughs> he, he for posts sure, some cool stuff. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the Daughtry thing, how was the the recording process? Was that was it collaborative? Was it how how was that set up? Um. Uh, let's see. The first record we didn't play on. That was already done. Right. Um. And by the time uh, we got in there, you know, we just toured on it and shot the videos and did yeah. all this stuff. Second record we all played on. We wrote on some same with the third um see the fourth record it was it went a little bit poppier Mm -hmm. and chris and and management wanted to work with different producers so on that end that was all all that we toured on it and shot some videos and then the fifth record which was the last one um we all got in there again with jakir king yeah who's a producer and uh did that record wrote some stuff on there and did it as a unit. Um, and then we released uh, World on Fire, which is, I, I kind of feel good about it. It's it's going back to the heavier vibe, which I enjoy. Right. And uh, that's out now. And as soon as, you know, things somewhat go back to normal, we'll be hopefully hitting the studio and recording some more. Yeah. And you were guys, I, obviously you had a whole, probably a whole tour lined up before all this stuff happened. We did, and yeah. it and it disappeared within a week or so. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, like the thing is, like, I mean, obviously that's a great situation for you guys with having the collaborative collaborative effort with the writing and and all that kind of thing. And and but also people have to realize too, like you know, they think you're in a band. It's like, oh, they're rich, they're stars, but it's like, yeah, you still need to you still need to work. <laughs> yeah. And touring yeah, is a big part of your income, right? Right. And there are different levels to you know. We're touring guys and sure, yeah. You know, so it's it's different for everybody. Not everybody's in the same boat. Right. And that goes for, for every profession. Absolutely. But I I am grateful though for the time that I'm able to spend with the family. This is the longest I've ever been able to spend at home with my my little dudes. Yeah, and, and you don't wife. you don't yeah, you don't get that time back, right? No, not at all. I mean, I've missed so many birthdays and yeah. baseball games and things, and that's just you know, it's just life. It's what what we do right but um I, I have taken advantage and been very productive when it comes to writing and creating uh, my own stuff yeah. and doing sessions for other people as well it's uh, i'm grateful for that um i put together a project called zenith divine so yeah we were talking about that online yesterday man that yeah. is some, that is some really badass like vintage vibe like you like it yeah it was it was cool because it kind of reminded me of the early like Snoop vibe with with what the, with what he's you know the rap thing and the yeah, vibe yeah and then the playing obviously the bass playing is great the production is great so how did that come about and who's who's all involved with that so uh, I started putting together you know just different because I love like early eighties kind of funk yeah late seventies um R and B and rap I think like, I really like the, do the I love Compton, that, that Compton oh thing, yeah right? and the nineties <laughs> stuff too yeah the nineties stuff too so. Um, I, I also do these bass videos for fun on Instagram and I'll, you know, that's all of those are basically just me jamming out and, right. and it's a creative outlet for me making tracks and just putting up, you know, a minute or 20 seconds here and there. But um, this, uh, this guy, Doobie, Doobie Duke Sims from this band Shinobi Ninja, we had sort of followed each other on Instagram and uh, he hit me up. He saw one of the bass videos and he was like, dude, I want to write to that. So oh, I cool. sent him the whole track and he sends me back fire, which was higher than the clouds. Oh, cool. So that was the first track that we did together. Awesome. And I said, dude, he said, you got any more? I said, hell yeah, I got some more. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the funny thing is we've never met ever. Interesting. Yeah. But you so know what? That That's the we, new way, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even we, like what we're doing here. It's like, that's sort of the new. Yeah. So we were going back and forth and, everything that he was sending back was exactly what I was thinking. So we're, the vibes are so creative and yeah. uh, I love, I love what he does, but now we have a full record, three videos done, uh, 13 songs. Wow. And uh, it's crazy. It's so easy. And so um, I really enjoy working with him. The vibes are so cool and I can't wait to actually do some live stuff. Yeah, and you have some other projects too. You have the is it Bob Church, right? What, Bobby what's, Church. Bobby Church. Yeah. So what's what's that about? That's with Timothy Bloom. He's a singer out of LA, and uh, he's 
ultra, ultra talented um, uh, singer, songwriter, producer. Um, I haven't done anything. We haven't done anything for a little bit together because we've just been each, you know, on our own sure. things, but um, still want to get back and do some stuff. Um, I met him through Timbaland. Oh, okay. Daughtry ended up, yeah, yeah. Daughtry ended up doing a song with Timbaland and we went in and recorded and wrote it. And he was, Timothy was signed to Timbaland's label. Oh, okay. Cool. So they were looking for someone to kind of help him put his band together and maybe work on some live stuff. Mm-hmm. So I went in to meet with Tim and uh, we vibe and we hit it off right away. Awesome. The rest is history with that. It was great. Yeah. It's, it's, how is, it, it, I, like, just lo- I just love to create, man. Well, I was going to say, so how does, how, uh, how is Chris, is Chris really supportive of that with, with, uh, from, from the Daughtry situation? Is he like totally like, yeah, do your thing? And yeah. Um, yeah. Um, he, he definitely has, he knows what he wants. Right. You know, and, um, which is completely understandable. Um, I, I, for the most part, get a lot of freedom to, to hold it down and do the things that I like to do. Um, but everything is based around um, what he does, which is important for this band. So, right. Because it's, yeah, he's, he's sort of driving the, driving the boat on that. And that obviously. Sorry that about that. That's okay. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. Um, but I'm happy to do it. I'm, you know, uh, I think part of our job is, you know, knowing roles and, and yeah. figuring out where you're, where you're fitting in and where, right. you're, where you can contribute the most and be beneficial. Yeah. And that, I mean, the doctor stuff is fun, I, you know, just from musically standpoint, oh, yeah. it's, it's like, yeah. like I would enjoy playing that stuff. It's rock. It's, it's not really funk, but it's like good, good quality, like it, rock stuff. It grooves. Yeah. yeah. Um, especially live, we kick it up a few notches and we yeah. do some cool stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, the new stuff that's coming is, is quite a bit heavier. So it's a lot of oh, fun cool. to play. Yeah. Yeah. That's sort of, it seems like that's sort of where your soul is, right? The heavy, heavy it rock. Is. Pop, it it's is. sort of punk. I'm, like. Yeah. I, I like attitude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's fun because like that's a lot of the groups you're naming off and the, and the groups that you play with are the groups that I enjoy. Like I, I had uh, my friend um, Brett was playing with PIL back in the day. Oh, and cool. uh, yeah, the Johnny Rotten, you go like, hey, come see us yeah. at, UC, at UC Irvine. I'm like, okay. And I didn't, I mean, I knew who Johnny Rotten was, but I didn't really know PIL. I didn't know that whole thing. And I was like, I went and saw those guys. I was like, holy hell. It's like, obviously punk rock, but yeah. it was cool because the same thing, like it was rocking. It was great players. And that's the thing. Like people think they kind of dismiss certain genres because maybe they don't like it, but right. there's like amazing players in every genre. Right. Uh, you know, my my grandfather and and my mom really tried to instill in me that you really have to appreciate all genres of music and um even if you don't like listening to it you really have to appreciate it yeah because it's it's music it's creativity it's a vibe so i can't hate on any of that stuff yeah you hear guys like even guys like roy clark like these older you know glenn campbell and it's like man those guys could freaking play oh yeah and you talk about playing, you come out to Nashville and yep. the players just, you know, playing at the bars down the street right. are insane. Insane. It's yeah, really... a, lot of, a lot of them are like playing for, I mean, it's sad, but a lot of them are playing for tips and it's some of the yeah. best players you've ever heard. They're hoping somebody obviously comes in and hears them and picks them up to take them on the road. But yeah, well, and that's the other thing is, you know, they will be on the road and then come back right back to that. Right. Yeah. You know, musician's life. <laughs> yeah. And it used to be like, it's fun. Like in LA, when I grew up, there was a lot of gigs and we did like Gazaris, the Roxy, the Whiskey, all those clubs that we all played. Yeah. And, uh, but you know, I, I'd same thing. Like I was 18, 19 years old. I'm like, I was like, didn't matter. I didn't care if I got paid. <laughs> it's just right. Wasn't. Oh yeah. You just want to play. Right. That's good. Yeah. We do it because we love it. Yeah, exactly. What's um so obviously you mentioned social media and, and that's a part of how we've connected also. And it seems like you're really active on your pages. Has that really changed the world for you as far as just connecting with people? And I think so. I think so. I enjoy it. I enjoy um, talking with people and, and, you know, a lot of people that are on my Instagram stuff don't really even necessarily know that I play in all these bands. A lot of the times, even though it's on there, they're just, you know, they'll come up to me and say, oh, dude, I saw your bass videos. I really like your bass videos. 
and yeah. that's the extent of it. And that's so, actually, that's really cool, right? Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, it's very cool for something that I just get up and I do every day because I just love to create that people yeah. connect with it in a way. Yeah, and they and they're not and also too in that situation too. It's not that's really more about the players. I mean, that's kind of like we talk about the base brotherhood, but there's really a musician brotherhood that kind of cuts through all the the star stuff and the the videos and all that kind of thing. That's that's real. And that's the good thing about social is that we can talk to people directly. Oh, and yeah, it's so accessible. There's I I especially appreciate the fact that everyone can just get on and do it you know what I mean whether and and everybody is yeah whether it's you know someone just starting out or or whiz bass players or drummers or guitar players or sing. I, I just I love to see people putting energy into creativity and music yeah. and performance and you know whether it's amazing or whether it's not so amazing I guess the, what is what is the term um the uh, it's it's uh oh gosh help me out here <laughs> <laughs> music is uh and movies are um sub subjective yeah uh, yeah yeah i've always said like you know you can see a kid playing like maybe he's a new player but he'll do one thing you go oh that's really cool <laughs> yeah yeah and you know you may not have thought of doing something like that you can hear personality and voice as people progress as players and you know um sometimes your job is not to <laughs> not to voice your identity in your yeah. plane you know yeah, you, gotta, you, gotta sort of, you have to sort of figure that yeah. out right yeah. right but when you can it's amazing yeah yeah and when you if you're fortunate enough to, to get in a situation where you're working with an artist that gives you freedom um and to really shine right yeah and i've been very fortunate uh in that aspect to where the people that I've been able to play with have given me that freedom. So especially like with Suicidal and Infectious and with Chris yeah. and, you know, it feels really good to actually um, do my own th thing too and not have to worry about, um, you know, rules or right. anything like that. I'm just, I just made a record, a Zenith yeah. Divine record with Doobie and we didn't meet, we'd done it during a pandemic and it's yeah. finished and I love it. I really and it do love it. sounds freaking awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I was very yeah, excited about you. that last night. I was like, I got on Spotify, which actually, and tell people um, how they can find you on Spotify, actually in social media in general. Okay. So on Instagram, um, I am, it's Josh Paul. On Facebook, I'm the same. It's Josh Paul. On Twitter, I am the real Josh Paul. Nice. And <laughs> and then um with Zena Divine, it's at Zena Divine. Cool. And then uh you can look on Spotify and Apple Music. Yeah, and we'll put um we're gonna put all those links in this episode description so people can find you. You're awesome. Yeah, make sure because I I mean a big part of what I'm trying to do is shine light. I mean, obviously you've been really well established, but shine light on artists on new projects, um, especially stuff like that. That's really awesome. And it's something that people might not expect from you, although it's sort of in the vein, a little bit of what you've done, but it's, it's, they have to check it out because it's badass. Uh, I, re <laughs> I really appreciate that. Yeah, appreciate absolutely. Um, so uh, do you have, uh, are, you, are your kids going to be musicians or what's your thought? Are you, do you encourage them or how does that work for you? I encourage them to do whatever it is they want to do. So I have a, my son, Brandon, who is a senior in high school, uh -huh. uh, he's actually going into the Air Force, but he is not. You look way too young to have a senior in high school. <laughs> I, I have a 24-year-old son. Wow, crazy. Who, who is in the Air Force, married, awesome. and, I, and I have a granddaughter. Wow, so, <laughs> crazy. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So I started young. I started yeah. young. But um, he is not interested in music at all. He yeah. is uh, more of a tech guy. That's and a good, sports guy, good, good and I'm cool with be. it. Yeah, yeah. My youngest two, they are definitely interested in music. Um, they have guitars and you know a bass that they play around on, and one of them likes to sing. And then my oldest son, who's in the Air Force uh, now, he's pretty much a whiz when it comes to making beats and stuff like that. He's really oh, cool. into hip hop. So are you guys gonna do some stuff together? You think we have? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I think there's a few of them on Instagram that I posted up a while back. Oh, cool. 
Yeah, we'll have to, yeah. We'll have to check that out. That's so, you yeah. know, that's, I, I, I've i seen, I know, I know you've probably seen those videos, Nathan East doing stuff with his son. Um, I yes. think his son's name is Noah. I could be wrong on that, but um, who's a great piano player. And he did actually on Nathan's last record, he, he had a tune that he hadn't played like yesterday. That's so oh, fun. Cool. Isn't that exciting yeah. like, to be able yeah, to do that? Is. When you, and when you have something in common with your kids, you know, as a parent, um, yeah, you're their parent, but yeah. it's even cooler when you actually genuinely have something in common with your kid that you both enjoy. Yeah, that connection, like the, I mean, it's sort of like the musician connection is a special thing, yeah. right? Obviously, the father yeah. and son, but that the, the musician musician thing is a little bit of a, a different thing. It's it's really cool. Oh yeah, yeah, very cool. Yeah, how exciting. So, um, so you have the, the um, your new record's going to be coming out with, with your group. Um, yep. And then the Daughtry thing is rolling. Um, what, what's the future for you? Obviously, you're waiting to tour, right? It's kind of. Yeah, yeah. Um, right now, it's, you know, obviously because of, of the world um, being a little crazy as it is right now, um, just sort of in a holding pattern if it, yeah. when it comes to touring. Right. Um, I'm going to continue to. Uh, do as many sessions as I can and write and hopefully pretty soon here start on another Xena divine record. Cause awesome. we're just, we're, we're kicking them out. And yeah. And I think, I think honestly, I, like, I mean, no, no, I said, I guess no bullshit, but like that album is going to do really well. And that's, uh, I, I really feel like Appreciate that it. that's for sure. Um, and I think that uh, that kind of, that kind of music is sort of timeless when you hear that and you listen to it. We, that was our goal. I mean, we just both enjoy fun, positive vibes yeah. and music. So um, aside from Zenith, um, I, you know, I'm going to try to write some more and uh, yeah, spend time with kids. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, like you said, like being, being able to be home and, and especially the year, early years of kids, like you want to be there for like the baseball games and for the birthdays. Yeah. And that those are because it's like when they get older, when they get to be teenagers, like they're busy. The dad, I got I got my stuff to do. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And there were there were times, you know, when they were little, um, because the youngest ones now are 10 and 11. Okay. So, but I remember thinking, you know, coming home from a long tour and and them almost not recognizing me. And that was right. like horrible i was like Ugh. yeah okay it kind of it's like ah <laughs> yeah but you know being here now definitely is making up for it. it's great yeah and you're yeah and it's cool because you're staying productive and that's that's the cool thing about the world we live in now with technology is that you can do it you can i mean that's kind of why i'm doing the podcast you know i was obviously i was bummed out too and i'm used to being on the road obviously you know a lot myself yeah. and yeah and i'm like i'm just, i gotta do something like i gotta do something creative and fun and, and try to do something positive you know well you know otherwise we're gonna go insane <laughs> exactly yeah for sure yeah and, and you know musicians i mean we're sensitive people like people may they may see us i mean you're like the rock guy and this kind of thing but like we're sensitive people we're creatives 100%. you gotta have that outlet right for sure for yeah. sure um thank you so much for joining us i i know you're a super busy guy and, uh, I, and I, I love you. i love the fact that you're you know being creative and you're focusing on positive stuff um, we need more of that, you know. I appreciate you, man. And uh, same to you. I appreciate you having me on and grateful for you. Yeah, well, thank you very much. Um, also, it, with, with uh, actually, we should talk a little bit about bases just before we go. Um, are okay. you still working with Warwick? Yes, uh, with Warwick. I've actually, um, Sandberg um, loaned me a few very cool bases that I've been playing lately. Yeah, and they got and some cool, they have some nice stuff. Yes, there's a, the Sanford California V4, I believe, that I've been playing a lot in my videos and on the Xena Divine stuff as well. Oh, cool. Um, and I just love that bass. But I have the Warwicks. I have the uh, uh, Star Bass, mm -hmm. which I love. It's yeah. the semi hollow body. Right. And uh, Streamers. And I have a cool uh, Corvette, too, yeah. for a lot of the heavier metal stuff. Sure. I have a five that I, I use. And um, I have a Mustang bass that's awesome that I have flat wounds. On, oh, cool. Yeah, I the flat wound for, thing is a, that's a special cool thing, right? It is. You know, you wouldn't really uh, think it would fit, but I just did a, well, recently I did a suicidal song. And uh, Ra Diaz, who's the bass player now, the current bass player, he's an yeah. awesome dude, great player. 
he hit me up and asked me if I wanted to do an instrumental version of one of the old suicidal songs oh, so cool. they can put it on an instrumental record they have out. Mm. So I put together this version of one of the tunes. It should be out. Uh, I think it's supposed to be this year. I'm not sure if it's going to be this year or beginning next year, but um, I used that Mustang on there with the flat wounds. So um, I functified basically an old suicidal song so oh, i can't wait for yeah. that to come out too it's really cool awesome yeah um, that's fun yeah and then i use uh all dunlop strings and accessories um gk yeah. i've been with forever they yeah they're great guys all of them yeah dunlop and gk it's just fantastic yeah, I, I had my uh, my 800 rb head <laughs> back in the day so that's a great like you still see those Love on backline rental oh yeah like. well they kind of re-released a uh, the anniversary series, I think, and it's based off that, like a souped-up version of it. Oh, cool! I think that recently came out. I don't have one yet, but I, I want to get one. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's it, you know, gear is it's like you can have fifty bases and still getting that fifty is fifty first is like still exciting, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> but I could do this with that one exactly. <laughs> you know what? I, it's trying it's trying to explain it to the wife. Like, no, I need this one because it does a specific thing. Yeah, I forgot to mention. Um, I have been doing this project with Jakir King, who's a producer cool. out here in Nashville. He produced the last uh, Daughtry record, but he produced um, Kings of Leon and uh, oh, awesome. just tons of people. He's a great, um, great producer, great human being. But we have a thing called the K Club oh. that we've been doing together. And uh, actually, a song just came out the other day called Side Hustle. Oh, cool. And it's very cool. And we get in and we write and we play everything right there live. We record it and release it. So you should check that out as well. Um, And uh, I wanted to mention that. Yeah, that's cool. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's like, I know you're, because you're doing like, kind of like, we we do the same thing. We have like 50 different (laughs) things going. You're you're trying to like remember everything. Yeah. Yeah. What reminded me of that was I looked over and the schedule for tomorrow <laughs> sessions over there for the K Club stuff. So awesome! Well, I you wanted know, to make sure I mentioned that. It's great that you're able to keep recording. I mean, obviously everybody's staying safe and and doing the masks and social distancing thing, but like that that's super cool to be able to keep that rolling. Yeah, um, I, I, Jakir for sure wouldn't have it happen if it wasn't safe. So yeah, yeah, yeah. awesome man. Thank you so much, Josh. Um, definitely, we're gonna. We'll put up all the links. People check that out in the description. Um, they can talk to you on Instagram. I know that that's awesome yeah. that you're that ex- that you're accessible. And, oh yeah, and check anybody out can all hit me pro- up if they want to for yeah, sure. Check out all your projects and and uh, it's exciting, man. Thank you so much. I really really appreciate your time and effort for appreciate you, brother. Yeah, yeah awesome. And, uh, it's all good. Keep up the good work. I can't yeah. wait to hear more of your playing and stuff. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's fun. I, like you said, you sort of have to do it. It's in our blood. <laughs> yeah, man. Awesome. All right. Cheers to you. you. Yeah. Cheers to you, Josh. And uh, have fun in Nashville. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.